2,000 years ago. It's already done. The word of God has spoken. And the word of God is the final amen. There's no rebuttal to the word of God. And where's Dominique? I love you. She stirred this in me last night at the Bible study, this word that I'm preaching. Because the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And I'm going to put you on the spot for a second. I love you. Don't get embarrassed. But we were talking about trusting the Lord. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me before she started speaking. And she said, I trust in God. I trust in who he is. I trust him. And the Holy Spirit said to me, Dominique, but you need to start trusting what he says. You need to trust in what he's already spoken about you. You need to trust in what he's already promised. A lot of us know the promises here. But it's time for the church to know them here. This is where it comes to life. It's not about thoughts. It's not about a knowing. It's about a belief. It's about a faith in what the word of God says. And when we put our faith in it, the word becomes alive inside of us. Faith activates the word of God. And there's over 1,800 promises in this word for each and every single one of us. 1,800 promises. I'll take them. Every single one of them. And it's not just for me. It's not just for John. It's for each and every single one of us. The Bible says that God's a respecter of no man, of no woman. Those promises are for each and every one of us. If you have your Bibles, turn to 2 Corinthians. I want to read this over you. You have your Bibles tonight. Praise God. You know, it's funny. A lot of us do the iPhones and the iPads nowadays for the scriptures, and that's fine. But there's something about the ruffling of the pages. And when the devil starts hearing those pages rustle, he starts shaking in his boots when a blood-bought Holy Spirit believer starts going into the Word of God. Oh, hallelujah. They sure does. Sure does. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Verse 20, it says, For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ Jesus. I'm going to say that again. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ Jesus. And through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. <laughs> you know... Every promise has been fulfilled in Christ. And we, as his children, when we shout amen, it's not for the preacher. It's not for us. When we shout the amen, it brings glory to God. When we put, we say, amen, Lord, I agree with what you've said. I agree with your promises, Lord. I agree with what you've spoken. I agree, Lord God. I receive your promises, Lord. Amen. It brings glory to his name. Jesus. <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> Listen to verse 21. Now it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us, set his seal of ownership on us, and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I used to sell cars many years ago. And if somebody wanted to finance that car, they would give a deposit on the car. And that deposit was saying, I promise that I'm going to pay you the rest. I'm giving you this now to show you that I'm going to give you the rest in due time. And Jesus has sent a deposit of the Holy Spirit inside of our hearts, guaranteeing what is to come. And that's not just salvation. That's not just eternal life. Your healing that's to come. Your promise that's to come. Your breakthrough that's to come. You have a deposit guaranteeing the promises of God that have become yes in Christ Jesus. Jesus is the promise. Do you understand that you have the promise inside of your heart? 
Every promise was fulfilled in Jesus Christ. As you read through the Old Testament, every promise, everything has been fulfilled in Jesus. And you have that inside of you. The greatest promise was when God sent his son. Oh, Jesus, help me, Lord. <laughs> oh, praise God. It's time that we start believing in what God has said. It's time that we start believing in what God has already spoken over our lives. We're fighting a fight that's already been won. Our greatest fight is our stand of faith. Amen. The Bible says to fight the good fight of faith. When we put our faith in Christ Jesus, we're pushing back. The victory is already won. When the enemy comes up against you, he's not coming up against Judy. He's not coming up against Nancy. He's coming up against the one who's inside of you. He's coming up against Jesus. He's coming up against the one who defeated him 2,000 years ago. And I want to tell you, upon that cross, he purchased your healing. He purchased your miracle. He purchased your breakthrough. And if you can believe tonight, if you can put your faith in Jesus and say, Jesus, I know you can. I know you did this. You will receive your healing tonight in Jesus' name. You will receive your miracle. You will receive your breakthrough. We all need something, amen? Yeah. Am I preaching something that you've never heard before? Then why are you looking at me like I got five heads? This is the good news. This is what it's all about. This is the gospel. Jesus. In Isaiah 55, verse 11, it says, So my word that goes out from my mouth, it will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I desire, and it will achieve the purpose for which I sent it. When God speaks, it accomplishes what it was sent to accomplish. When God speaks, it completes the desire he had in his heart before he spoke it. And God's desire is that you should be healed from the inside out. His desire is that you should be saved, that you should be redeemed, that you should be walking in power and in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And God has spoken in Psalms. It says that he sent his word and it healed them. There's healing in the word of God. There's deliverance in the word of God. In just a moment of faith, the Bible says that the word of God is alive, that it is living, that it is active, that it is sharper than any two-edged sword. <laughs> Amen. And the greatest word that Jesus spoke is it is finished oh glory feel that tonight Jesus spoke and said it is finished a once for all Jesus came and he paid the price in our stead he purchased all that we need upon the cross in those moments and every time we continue to fight and push we're taking away from what's already been done. And I want to tell you that your healing tonight is yours. That Jesus purchased it for you. That your miracle tonight is yours. That your salvation, if you don't know Jesus in this place, it's yours. Because of the blood that was shed upon that cross. In Hebrews chapter 9, I want to read this over you. You know, when you start preaching the blood of Jesus, things begin to happen in the atmosphere. A lot of preachers don't want to preach about the cross anymore. They don't want to preach about the blood. They say it's too messy. But this is the core of the gospel. This is where the power is. That's why there's such resistance. That's why there's such resistance against the gospel being preached in its fullness. We need to start preaching the cross again. We need to start preaching the blood again. We need to start preaching the resurrection power of our God again. 
These signs shall follow those that believe, Jesus said. <sighs> oh, hallelujah. In Hebrews chapter 9, in verse 11, it says, When Christ came as high priest of the good things that are already here, he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not man-made, that is to say, not a part of this creation. He did not enter by means, and, and, and Pastor Gene, I love what you said before, went right along with what I'm preaching. He did not enter by the means of the blood of goats and calves, but he entered the most holy place once for all by his own blood, having obtained eternal redemption. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled on those who are ceremonially unclean sanctify them so they are only outwardly clean. How much more? Can we say that? How much more? Then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God to cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God. For this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. Now that he has died as a ransom to set them free from the sins committed under the first Covenants that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. Jump down to verse 24. For Christ did not enter a man made sanctuary that was only a copy of the true one, he entered unto heaven itself. Now to appear for us in God's presence, nor did he enter heaven to offer himself again and again the way the high priest enter the most holy place every year with blood that is not his own. Then Christ would have to suffer many times since the creation of the world, but now he has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to do away with sin by the sacrifice of himself. Just as man is destined to die once and after that face judgment, so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many people, and he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. Amen. amen. Can I get an amen for the word of God? Amen. This is why it's good to have our Bibles and read, around, read, read along with me. So Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many people, and he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. How many know Jesus is not a baby in a manger anymore? How many know he's not a lonely carpenter? How many know he's not a broken man hanging on a tree? How many know he's a risen Savior? He's a lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords with all power in his hands. The Bible says in Revelation that his eyes burn like fire. That his shoes shine and are shone with bronze. And we're going to look at him. He's going to come and he's going to look into our very souls when he comes with those eyes of fire. Yes. And they're going to pierce us. Yes. Oh, but what a glorious day that is going to be when he comes with salvation in his hands. Amen? And that's the Jesus that's alive on the throne right now. Yeah. I laugh when I see people wearing, if you have one, I'm not making fun of you, when crucifix with Jesus still on it. I say, he's not on the cross anymore. <laughs> he's a risen Savior. He's alive in power. And he's alive in this place tonight. Nothing has changed. we got to stop taking away from the power of the cross and the power of the name and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's time to start believing again. It's time to start putting our trust back where it belongs, on the cross, back in faith of the resurrection. Power of our God. The blood set us free to remain free. We were set free to remain free not to go back into the bondage of the law back into the bondage of religion back into the bondage of sickness back into worldly mindsets we were set free for all of this to remain free and i want to tell you sickness is not of our god and he will set you free tonight to remain free 
All those chains are going to be broken tonight in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If we can believe again. How many know Jesus is a healer? How many know he's a baptizer? How many know? How many know that there's power in the blood of the Lamb of God? This is the message. If you wanted some awesome theological three-point sermon, I don't have one. But I'm going to tell you that Jesus is alive today, that there's power in his name, that there's power in his blood. Just believe and you shall be saved. Just believe and you shall be healed. Just believe and you shall be delivered. We're not waiting on God. He's waiting on us. He's ready to heal. He's ready to touch. He's ready to deliver. He's just saying, will you believe? Will you lift your hands? Will you open your hearts for me again? And one seed of faith can move a mountain. What can it do to something like cancer? What's cancer to God? It's nothing. I see like a piece of dust. You just wipe off someone's shoulder. It takes no effort to remove it for our God. <laughs> uh, see, maybe I'm an evangelist. Maybe I'm not. But when I hear messages on the cross... When I hear messages on the blood of Jesus, something starts stirring inside of me. I don't care who's preaching it. It could be in a Methodist church by the most boring preacher in the world. And he's saying, Jesus hung for you and his blood set you free. I'm going to be on my feet. I'm going to be shouting hallelujah because I wouldn't be here standing before you without that perfect blood that was shed 2,000 years ago. And I'm grateful to this day. Never let the message of the gospel stop moving you. It should stir us every time we hear it. This this is the good news. The Greek, we don't even have English for the Greek, for gospel. It actually means almost too good to be true news. It's better than good news. It's almost too good to be true. But guess what? It is true. This happened. God loved you so much that he sent his perfect son in our place so that we could be saved, so we could be healed, so we could be set free and be reconciled unto God once again. He desired relationship with his children so much that he sent his perfect son to restore his children back unto himself. Is anybody know what I'm talking about? Is anybody else here because of what Jesus did upon that cross? Are you healed? Are you saved? Do you have peace and freedom inside of you? He saved me just in time too. Praise God. I should be dead. But I'm not. I'm very alive. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Just in time. Just in the nick of time. Jesus stepped down and pulled you out of the miry clay. He pulled you from the flames of hell. And he put your feet upon a rock. He dusted you off. He cleaned you out. He filled you up. He pushed you on the... Oh! Yes. Just in the nick of time. Hallelujah. Oh, the Bible says just in the right time. Even while we were yet sinners... Christ died for us. And we get so caught up sometimes in this world and in the burdens. But we were set free to remain free. I want to get that in you tonight. We know the word of God, correct? He who the Son sets free is free indeed. It doesn't say he who the Son sets free was set free so that they could go back into bondage, so they could go back to the place they once were. My Bible says that the old is gone and the new has come. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Hebrews 4. I'm wrapping this up. I don't have a big word. I, I, I want to see Jesus be Jesus in this place tonight. Amen. How many believe that the Holy Spirit's about to break out in this place? I feel fire. I feel an anointing of the Holy Spirit. 
that will break every yoke of bondage, that will break every yoke of sickness, of disease. Oh, Jesus. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. I quoted it before, but I want to read it. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Now I told you one day, we're all going to stand before Jesus, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the risen Savior. And we're all going to have an account to give for this life we lived. And as Christians, we're not going to be judged for our sin because we know the blood has washed us and cleansed us of all sin. He's going to say, what did you do with what I gave you? And I want to tell you, I want to stand before Jesus with a full conscience and say, Lord, I stood on every promise that you spoke. Lord, I believed every word that you said. I believed when nobody else would believe, God. I stood. I believe in you. And it's time for us to believe in those promises. And God has promised that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, you shall be healed. He has declared as for you and your household, you shall be saved. If you're believing for unsaved loved ones, Jesus is going to touch them. He's going to save them where they're at tonight. I'm a prodigal that's come home. There's an anointing upon my life to bring the prodigal home. If you've been believing for your sons or daughters, I'll pray with you. I'll stand with you. Jesus will touch them. He will bring them back home. Not unto you, but unto him where they belong in Jesus mighty name and I believe and I believe it's time for us to believe again Can, and I prayed before I prayed for an hour before I left the house and I just said Jesus let faith arise in the hearts of everyone there let faith arise God to believe beyond what we see my mom said something powerful tonight it's time for the church to get used to signs and wonders again We need to start believing that what we read, we're going to see. Not only are we going to see, but we're going to operate in it. And I believe we're going to see miracles tonight that some of you have never seen. But it's just the beginning. And the greatest miracle of all is a healed heart. God touches the outside to get to a heart. The Bible says God doesn't look at the outside as man does. He looks at the heart. Any miracle on the outside is to get to someone's heart. It's for salvation. And I'll tell you right now, you might be coming up here to receive healing in your body, but God sees so beyond your outside. He sees some muck. He sees some pain. He sees some hurt in your heart that he's so more concerned about, and you're going to leave here complete. Jesus came to mend and heal the brokenhearted. But he will touch you from the inside out. Not only will he heal you on the inside, he will heal you on the outside. And I believe that there's an anointing here to release the calling and the destiny of our God upon his sons and daughters. Because it's time for the church to rise up in what God has called us to do. Each and every single one of us have been called for such a time as this. This is not just a healing service. This is a miracle and healing service. And you're about to leave here operating in miracles. In Jesus' mighty name. And it's time. It's time. Who said that before? It's time. It's time. It's beyond time. It's beyond time. I haven't seen these moves in my time that I read about, that I see. Oh, it's time for this generation to be shaken by Jesus Christ once again. Shout amen if you hear me. Are you sick of seeing the same old, same old? Do you know what the answer is? Amen. It starts with a capital J. E-S-U-S. Jesus Christ is the answer for everything that we're seeing. He's the answer for this heroin problem in Tom's River. He's the answer for a dry, complacent church. He's the answer for a broken family. He is the answer to everything that we see and more. And we need to start turning and putting full faith back in the name and man and character and nature 
of Jesus Christ. Reinhard Bonnke said, if you preach Jesus to be the Savior, he'll save. If you preach him to be a healer, he'll heal. If you preach him to be a deliverer, he'll deliver. But I want to tell you, when you preach the full gospel of Jesus Christ, he will be the Savior. He will be the healer. He will be the deliverer. He will be the baptizer. He is all these things and more. We don't come. We don't know. Just come open. Come yielded. Come ready. I'll tell you, the, some of the most powerful times God encountered in my life, it was when I wasn't expecting it. Yeah. It wasn't what I was asking for. But it was exactly what I needed. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Come on. Let, let faith arise in you tonight. Can we believe beyond what we see? Can we believe beyond what we hear? It's what we say the word of God here. We walk by faith, not by sight. Let's get it here. I want to walk by faith. I want to believe. I want to believe beyond. I know, Jesus, if you say you can. Oh, yes, you can, Lord. Stand in the presence of the Lord. <laughs> Lift your hands all over this place. Put your eyes on Jesus. Just say his name. Oh, oh say it with some unction. Say it with some authority. Jesus. Shh. Oh. Declare it into the atmosphere tonight.